Hello, Year 9, and welcome to um, my first ever voiceover of a PowerPoint. Today, we are going to be looking at practice exam questions um, ready for um, the end of your Christian Practices unit. So over the past couple of weeks since the last half term, you have been um, learning all about the practices um, that Christians partake in to show their faith and um, their commitment and love and devotion to God. And that would have linked a lot to what you um, learned during our Christian beliefs module. So you're seeing how they are putting those beliefs into practice. And as you come towards the end of it, we will do um, some practice exam questions like we would if we were in school like normal. So I'm going to go through the following PowerPoint and today I'm only going to be taking you through a part one, two and three questions. Um, so that's the one marker, the two marker and the four marker. And then um, you'll see on my last slide, I will next week be taking you through a four marker and a five marker. So they're kind of bigger um, extended answers. Um, so today we're just going to start off with the shorter ones, questions one, two and three. So our aims are to revise the structure of a GCSE paper and to understand um, what structure specifically to use in a part one, a two and a three, because your layout is going to be slightly different for each question. Now, part of my slideshow, I've added a um, what we call a knowledge organizer, and it basically summarizes everything that you would have been learning about and reading about in your Christian practices study guides. Down here on the left, you can see all of the key words. Um, and this is something which you can take off of this PowerPoint and put into a Word document and print it if yourself if you want to in your books so that you could highlight it and make notes from it. But it's a really good revision tool. There's a lot in Christian practices and therefore there's a part one and there's also a part two. This is more what you have been doing this week and what you will be doing um, for... Uh, and what you would have done last week, sorry. And again, you've got the keywords down on the right hand side. So in an exam paper, you could get asked an exam question on any of the things. Sorry guys, I had to pause. Miss Field came bursting into my room, as you may have just heard. Um, so carrying on, I'm not sure where I left off, but like I said, you've got these um, kind of key parts that you've been looking at and an exam question could come up for any one of, of these um, things. So you need to make sure that you're revising everything that we have looked at ready for the practice exam questions. Okay, moving on. So your first question will be what we refer to as a part one question, and this is a multiple choice. You're always given a multiple choice as part one. That will never change. And it is to assess your understanding of keywords and terms. As it's only a one marker, you only need to put down the letter that represents your answer. So you'll have multiple choice A, B, C or D. And if you think the answer is D, you would pop that down. We're going to have a look at that in a sec anyway. So, for example, if your question was which one of the following um, is the sacrament that commemorates Jesus' Last Supper. You would then have on your exam paper four options. A, marriage, B, baptism, C, Eucharist, or D, Sunday. And you would then decide which one you think is the answer. So hopefully already you've worked out that the answer is Eucharist. On your um, piece of paper then, you would put one in the margin to represent that you're on question one and you would literally just put letter C. You don't have to write out Eucharist in full, but you can if you want to. By not writing it out in full, even though you're only saving yourself probably 10, 15 seconds, those seconds do add up in the real exam and could be the difference between you finishing a sentence 
or not. So um, save yourself time and just pop down the letter C. OK, moving on to part two then. So this is what I'd refer to as kind of your bullet point answer. It's only made up of two marks and therefore you only need to give two very simple points. An example of a question you could have could be give two examples of the work of the church in the local community. The really, really key word in this sentence and our command word is give. It's not asking you to explain. It's not asking you to define. Um, it's just asking you to give two examples of the work that they will do. So we practice this quite a bit in lesson because I really wanted you to work on the technique of not wanting to write down lots of information and keeping it nice and clear and succinct. As it's only asking us to give to, that's all we'll give. And it can be as simple as food banks and raising money for charity. You don't need to write in a sentence, some Christian churches will give to food banks. It's unnecessary. Just stick to the basics. So now your answer sheet will look something like this. You've got your question two in the margin and then you've just written food banks and raising money for charity. No sentence starters, um, no explanation needed. Again, do not waste your time putting it into full sentences. This is time that you will need elsewhere um, and especially for the part five that we'll be looking at next week. Um, and that would get you two out of two. Moving on then to the part three, which is a four marker. Confusing part three, but it is four marks. Part three is when you are required to start writing in full sentences. And again, we have practiced quite a few of these in um, our lessons. Structure for this answer is really key um, and it will help you to get your points down nice and quickly and succinctly. We don't want you, as I use the phrase, waffling on, and I know that often makes you laugh, um, waffling on, giving us masses amounts of information that we don't need. It's only asking for two things. Um, and therefore, our structure that we highly encourage that you use and the ones that we had started to use in lesson is point, explain, point, explain. So let's have a look at what that actually looks like in practice. Your exam question could be explain two contrasting ways in which the Eucharist, Holy Communion, is celebrated in Christianity. Before I go into what an answer would look like, the key thing that tends to trip students up at this point is the word contrasting. Um, they think they've got to suddenly think of two polar opposite examples or two polar ways in which they celebrate it. And you don't need to. Really what the word contrasting means is differing. Two different ways in which they celebrate. So if you're saying they celebrate through prayer, in your second point you wouldn't talk about celebration through prayer because you've already mentioned it. So two different points. Let's look at an example um, answer that I wrote up then. So explain two contrasting ways in which Eucharist Holy Communion is celebrated in Christianity. I'm going to use my sentence starters because that is what leads the examiner into knowing exactly what I'm talking about. This is what we refer to as signposting and is something that I did mention um, before lockdown. So I would always start my sentence with one way in which Christians will celebrate is through the breaking of bread and drinking of wine. This, and that's my explanation, this represents the body and blood of Christ and mirrors the actions taken by Jesus during his Last Supper. So I've made my point in the first sentence. I then explained what the drinking of the wine and the breaking of the bread is and why they do it. And then on to my second point, again using my connective of another way in which Christians may celebrate is through prayers and readings from the Bible. The readings will remind them of the sacrifice that Jesus uh, of the sacrifice Jesus made and help give thanks to him. So again, I've got my point and then I've got my explanation after. 
if I was an examiner looking at this answer, the way I work through it is, can I see my nice clear point at the beginning and its explanation? If I can, there's two ticks. So one tick for the point, one tick for the explanation. In my next paragraph, I can see a clear point about prayer and readings from the Bible and then I can see a clear explanation that they do this to remind them of the sacrifice that Jesus made um, and help to give thanks and both of those points with explanation links really clearly and directly to um, the word celebrate as celebrate is in the question here we want to be mentioning it and i can see here the word celebrate is there and the word celebrate is there sorry for my really awful circles um, so again really nice clearly set out for the examiner they can't argue with that then what you would do is pop it into your sheet like this I'm rubbish at lining the lines up with the words, but you get the gist of it. You are just popping a three in the margin and then you are going into it and keeping it nice and clear. This would not take up this much room, obviously, on a written piece of paper. We're talking four sentences maximum. So again, keeping it nice, clear, succinct and saving as much time as you can and banking it for the 12 marker later on in the paper. Okay, moving on to next week then. Hopefully you found um, that useful and sometimes it can be a bit easier when things are verbally explained to us rather than having to decipher all of the writing I upload to show my homework for you. Um, next week we will be completing a part four and a part five in the same format. So again, I will talk over a PowerPoint and um, help you to kind of get a feel for an exam paper again and, and the sort of layout and structure that we need to be using. Um, and then after that, we will be setting some exam questions for you to try and have a go at, at home covering this Christian practices module. Not something to panic about just yet. Um, just continue doing what you're doing. Have a listen to the PowerPoint and um, stay calm because we will guide you through it at home. Um, just want to say a massive, massive well done for how hard you're working so far. Um, you're just doing brilliantly and students, you've been thrown into a situation which we could have never foreseen, despite being the RE teachers. And you're doing so, so, so brilliantly. So massive, massive well done. And we're so impressed. So keep it up. Finally, if you've got any questions or queries, please make sure you email your RE teacher specifically. So for me, you most of you have got my email now any way from show my homework. And if you are um, one of Mrs. G students, then make sure you are emailing her. Speak to you next week.